What is going on everyone and welcome back to another video. For those who don't know me, I have nearly 10,000 hours in Lost Ark. So when I heard Throne and Liberty had the same AGS publisher and also was a game that first started in Korea, I knew I had to try the game out and compare it to Lost Ark. I'll be talking about my first experience with Throne and Liberty. We'll be talking about both the good and the bad in my opinion, so let's get started. Now, let's talk about the things the game got right. Alt-Tab sound adjustment. For instance, when you alt-tab, the in-game music gets quieter. It's a small detail, but it's a nice touch, especially if you're multitasking or stepping away for a bit. You know, this is like buying a car that automatically warms your seat when the ambient temperature gets to a certain point. It's not a necessity, but it made me appreciate the developers for adding this. Number two. Smooth open world. The open world is such a freeing experience compared to Lost Arks. The different animals you can turn into for mobility, like a leopard for ground, an eagle for travel, and that otter looking thing for water. Those really make you feel like you can freely move to anywhere in the game. There's no constant map loading and it creates a more immersive experience. It's a huge relief not to deal with map transitions all the time. Lost Ark can take a page out of the notebook here. Number three, beautiful visuals. I mean, seriously, let's not forget these visuals. The game is indeed absolutely beautiful. From the environments to the character designs, it's visually stunning, which really helps with the overall immersion. Apparently, I heard people say the graphics suck, Hey, this sucks. Are you from the future or what in the world are you in? You can't see these graphics and say it sucks. I'm going to be honest with you. Because there are games out there like WoW and RuneScape that are way worse. Let's be real here. And number four. Finally, after each quest, the game provides a narrated summary. Even if you're someone who skips through the dialogue, I'm guilty as charged. It's a great way to stay engaged with the story without needing to read every line. I can't express how much I love this feature. Similar to point number one, it was definitely not necessary for the developers to put this in. So I can tell they really went into detail to provide the best game experience for the players. But now we have to talk about the cons. Not every game is perfect, and some of these may be fixable, so let me know in the comments. But these are what I felt made the game less enjoyable. So first off, unpacking. What was that about? Even with the game pre-downloaded, it took way too long to actually get into the game. Now I get, it's day one. But still, it's frustrating to sit there when all you want to do is play. It took 19 minutes to deal with that shader optimization bar before I could actually get into character select. People want to jump right in, not wait almost 20 additional minutes. That was definitely not the best first impression to say the least. It kind of ruined the initial hype that I had, but I know it's more of a one-time thing, so I won't talk more about this. Number two. I've been hearing that you're kind of locked into a set build early on, and it's hard to reset if you change your mind later. I'll have to keep playing and see for myself if that's true, but it's a bit of a red flag if it is. Who doesn't want the freedom to experiment without any consequences, especially early on? I am aware that it's a very flexible game in the sense that you can swap weapons and that will immediately change your class, which is already a step up from Lost Ark. But is it easy to get the same tier weapons? You know, you gotta think about these kinds of questions. Are you free to reset your stats again? Can you reset your skill levels and your passive levels? Again, I have to keep playing, or someone smart in this can provide more input in the comments below. Number three, slow startup time. The startup process wasn't much better. Now, is it better than Lost Ark? Most definitely. And although I have been trained by Lost Ark to accept slow startup times, that doesn't mean every other game should. You know, something like League of Legends has an extremely fast startup time, so I don't see why we can't either. 
Number four, the camera controls also throw me off. You have the option between action mode and classic mode, but neither felt, you know, particularly the best option. It's one of those things where you have to keep pressing V over and over and over for the appropriate situation. In Lost Ark, there's only one camera mode where you look down at your character and I feel a lot more comfortable with that view because I can see from all angles. I mean, for Throne and Liberty, I do like the action mode because it is more in my POV, but it's sometimes difficult to talk to NPCs, for example, and most importantly, you can't use your mouse, so then you have to swap back to classic mode in order to use it. It's not really fun to do that. But number five, about the quests. The areas where you need to go don't always show up clearly on the screen. I may still be a noob for this, but sometimes I'm doing the main quest and I'm looking 360 and I don't see any indicator of where to go. It honestly felt like I was using MapQuest in the 90s, trying to figure out where to go next by pressing the map key over and over. Come on, it's 2024. We have self-driving cars now. Where is the BDO feature where I can just press T and get to where I need to go for free? Again, maybe there actually is one and I just haven't noticed yet. So let me know if I'm an idiot, please, because I need that T so badly. That would help me with this game a lot more. Number six, there's that time-sensitive map puzzle or maze puzzle or whatever that you can call it that I just didn't like. Now, this is more of a rant, but it's more frustrating than fun. The pressure combined with unclear instructions just makes it a drag. If you mess up, you're stuck repeating it over and over, which is also not exactly enjoyable. I'm hoping these types of quests will no longer be shown in the future, please, because I don't exactly like these gimmicky quests where you have to solve a puzzle. I have caveman brain. I want to play video game. If I wanted to play a puzzle, I could just open up my Sudoku app on my phone. Why would I be playing Throne and Liberty? Number seven. The tab targeting gameplay is a hit or miss. If you played other games that have tab targeting, then you might like it for the nostalgia. But this is so outdated now. It's functional, but it lacks the modernness, the fluidity that you'd expect from a game today. Now, it's not necessarily a deal breaker. I still had a lot of fun, but it is worth mentioning, especially because, you know, Lost Ark. I haven't found a game as amazing as Lost Ark's combat yet. Biased, I know. Number eight. Lastly, why are the skill keys mapped to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero equals minus zero equals? Am I playing the piano here? In fast paced moments, this layout is just awkward and not very user friendly. There may be a way to help with this or maybe not. I have no idea, but as of now, having to move with my WASD keys, which is normal, but then also having to use my numbers is literally like playing the piano. That was one of the things I didn't like about Maple Story, and even in Maple, there is a way to have multiple skills in one key. But anyways, those were my first impressions of Throne and Liberty. I know I had a lot more cons in there, but they are mostly just annoyances more than Throne and Liberty being a terrible game. Now, there's definitely room for improvement, but I can also see a lot of potential. I have heard, though, that this game is not free-to-play friendly, though, and doesn't have good reception in Korea. So I'm not sure about the future of this game yet. Time will tell if the West enjoys this game more than Lost Ark. But have any of you all tried it out yet? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and let's talk about it. Thank you all so much for watching and for my pineapple game. The secret word is MapQuest. If you watch the video, you'll know why that's the word. But anyways, for the rest of you, all right. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you all, and I'll see you all. Goodbye. <laughs> Look at, you can change your head size. This looks absolutely ridiculous. Oh my goodness. Hey, babe, what do you want to eat? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh.
This is clown. This is exactly like clown. Try again. Is it not this? This. There you go. This is exact copy of clown. Oh my god, again? Goblin Dance Finale. Oh, fine. How is that? Just, just say press 1. Oh my. Alright. 